subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Hello everyone. In my latest column for the print, I write about a white paper on democracy released by Beijing recently. In this column, I look at the explanation that China usually presents to the world about being a democracy. This white paper was released in response to a summit that's happening in Washington DC. This summit has been called by President Joe Biden. This summit will include over 111 leaders who are part of a democratic nation. And this summit is targeted at challenging nations who are not exactly democratic and promoting democratic values around the world. The Summit for Democracy, which is currently underway in Washington, will continue from the 9th till the 10th of December. And one of the countries that has been invited to this summit is Taiwan. Taiwan is considered by China to be part of its own territory. And the invitation to Taiwan has really rattled Beijing. And Beijing has issued a white paper in response to the kind of um, discussion around democracy. But we might be asking this question, why is Beijing so invested in claiming the right to be a democracy, even though we know that it's not exactly a democracy? There is a particular kind of justification that Beijing provides. There are gatekeepers in the Chinese social media world who translate ideas from the West into China. And people do find out when things like the Summit for Democracy happen. And Beijing has to somehow respond to the kind of narrative which are created around the world, especially around democracy. Democracy remains an important concept that even a country like China cannot exactly ignore. It's part of our international order since the Second World War. And China finds it important that they have to somehow argue in favor of being a democracy. And so China provides these kind of four arguments. So what are these four justifications provided by Beijing about being a democracy? The first one is the National People's Congress, which is the parliament in China. And China considers that there is a grassroots level democracy which is participated and which can be exercised through the NPC. But we know for a fact that NPC does not come up with laws. The laws are discussed and passed by the Standing Committee of the Politburo and NPC merely um, just uh, rubber stamps the law and that becomes the major law of the land. And this has been reported extensively by experts and journalists around the world. So we know this for a fact that NPC does not make laws like other countries. Maybe it's the UK or the US or elsewhere where laws are discussed and passed through the parliamentary process. That's not exactly what NPC does. The second justification provided by Beijing is the presence of village democracy and elections in villages. Again, that's an interesting topic that China has provided as a justification for a long time. Though there was a trend towards village democracy up until the time Xi Jinping came into power, Hu Jintao's era saw quite a bit of relaxation around village democracy. People could go out and vote for a certain individual. But now what has happened is the party makes sure that the person who gets elected to the role of party secretary for the village is usually liked by the party and there's no one who stands in opposition to that person. So therefore, the argument about being sort of a democracy because of the voting in the villages is again not convincing. Let's look at the second argument in favor of Beijing or China being a democracy. The second argument is that China allows advisors to work within the CPPCC, which is the Chinese Consultative Conference. And that's where these advisors, I'm just paraphrasing the whole term, these advisors are part of a consultative process where they can give their opinions about how the country should be run. But we know from the Chinese sources that these advisors are not exactly supposed to give their opinion and their opinions don't exactly shape up the policy in the country. What happens is these advisors are supposed to be part of the United Front system and they are supposed to um, you know, be part of the community that they belong to, whether it's business community or the intellectual community or overseas Chinese community. And they are supposed to influence the local community um, as to what the party wants. And therefore, 
CPPCC does not exactly um, create a kind of democracy that China thinks that it does. Let's examine the third justification offered towards China being a democracy in the white paper. The white paper says that China has significant number of villages where the elections do happen and that itself is the reason that China should be considered a democracy. The village democracy aspect is very interesting. There was a movement towards greater democracy in, at the village level before Xi Jinping came into power. During the Hu Jintao era, people could go out and vote for the person they liked. That had changed quite significantly after Xi Jinping came to power. And now the party makes sure that the person who becomes the party secretary for the village is usually either liked by them or they can work with the party. And therefore, there is no opposition to the will of the party at the village level. And therefore, the whole election process that takes place at the village level does not translate into any kind of democracy or any policy change at the local level. The fourth and the final justification provided by China towards being a democracy is the fact that China has eight political parties. These political parties have been around since 1948, but they don't exactly um, run for the elections or they're not part of the kind of democratic process that we have elsewhere in Asia and the West or elsewhere wherever we have democracies. But we know for a fact that these political parties are merely a decorative item where they are kept to maintain a kind of a notion that China is a democracy. They rarely um, have any impact on the policies. And we know for a fact that some of the top leaders of these political parties are members of the Communist Party. So they are not independent at all. There is a certain kind of justification. There's a party uh, which is targeted towards Taiwan and creating more sympathetic views in Taiwan. And that political party does CCP's bidding in Taiwan. So these parties are kept for a certain reason, but not exactly um, to exercise democratic rights of the people or to conduct elections.